Given the gravity of the coronavirus crisis, it's bringing about a unique set of pressures on frontline staff as they're having to work differently. You know, isolating from family, there might be a lot of worries about themselves, loved ones, and looking after uh, a large number of unwell people, especially as the death rate is high, that in of itself brings um, pressure on staff. Um, there's a re recognition that given the seriousness of the situation, that well-being really needs to be a priority um, for staff as there are so many challenges um, that they're coming up against. Um, and we really need to think about ways of mitigating um, these challenges to, to help support our frontline staff. It's very typical in a short-term crisis that we can go into a survival mode or uh, automatic pilot and it's not until after the crisis is over that we have the headspace to think and reflect about the impact that's had on ourselves and our work. The difficulty with the COVID-19 situation is that this is likely to last several months so it's really important that we think now about well-being and how we manage that. There's going to be different phases to this, um, times when we're going to be poised and ready anticipating what's to come, followed by periods of intense pressure and that cycle in of itself is you know, very draining. There are other drains on our emotional resources as well, like being in PPE for very long periods of time, having multiple difficult conversations with patients and families in a day, making split decisions and this is an ever-changing situation that we're going to have to get to grips with. So COVID-19 puts increased pressure on an already very stretched healthcare system. Uh, there's increased demand on resources, things like staff time, but also equipment like PPE, ventilators, critical care beds. Um, one of the consequences of that is that it might mean we're not able to provide the level of care that we ordinarily would fit for everyone. Um, and I think for, for staff that, that creates a lot of, of distress. You know, we all have an internal moral or ethical uh, code which guides the way that we want to practice and the care that we want to deliver. And if we're, we have to work in ways which are inconsistent with that code, then that can lead to a lot of distress. That can lead to us feeling angry, feeling guilty or feeling upset. Maybe we feel like we're not doing a good job or that we just don't know what we're doing. Um, a lot of staff are outside of their comfort zones and working in ways which they never have before. So it's just really important that we think about uh, our well-being and the, the well-being of our colleagues from a psychological point of view as much as we can at, at this acute phase. So when thinking about psychological well-being in such a complex and difficult set of circumstances, it's really important that we think about getting the basics right. So making sure that you uh, get some fresh air during a shift, making sure you're eating enough, drinking enough, making sure we just do the simple stuff well. Um, I'd suggest to speak to your managers, um, both about the well-being of the team or any individuals that you, you might be worried about, um, but also to, to encourage them to think about practical stuff that they might be able to do at a team level uh, to help. Uh, so. For example, one simple thing that we've been recommending is having um, a designated space where people can just go and take a minute, um, somewhere where people can just go and you know, have a little bit of time to themselves, have a bit of privacy to just catch the breath, perhaps have a cry, uh, just sit down for a second, have a drink, have something to eat, whatever it is that they might need. Um, it's also really important to think about how you're doing outside of work as well, um, perhaps even more than, than under normal circumstances, so making sure that you are still um, staying in touch with friends, family, even if that is just through video call or text message rather than uh, meeting face to face as you would normally. Um, you know, just because we're socially distancing doesn't mean we have to be socially disconnected from the people that are important in our lives. Um, we, we might not be able to do all the things that we usually would to, to keep ourselves well and to manage stress, but I think it, it, it's really important that we prioritise things that are nice and relaxing. Uh, that's going to depend on what, what works for you. You know, it, it might be about finding something that gives you a sense of achievement or a sense of purpose, or it might just be sitting in front of the telly in front of Netflix. And, and, and that's fine as well. I think it's really key to not put pressure on, on yourself to, to, to be doing stuff on your own time, but to making sure that you, you prioritise just rest and recovery, whatever that looks like for you.
make time to have small check-ins with each other during your shift, you know, a simple how are you doing is going to become increasingly important. It's harder to gauge each other's expressions and emotions through PPE, so being more tuned into eyes and foreheads is also going to be really important. There might be less opportunity during your shift to, to do this, so it might be helpful to think about ways that you can touch base with each other either before or after a shift. Um, you might want to ask your manager or team leader about ways to integrate this into regular meetings or handovers. Could you have a reflective discussion about how everyone's doing at the beginning of handover, for example? There might also be less opportunity to have the usual debriefs that you'd have with one another, you know, at the end of a shift. So you might want to think about ways that you can do this while socially distancing through video chat or a WhatsApp group, for example. We also want to create a culture where compliments are given for every effort or win, no matter how small. So despite the challenges of COVID-19, it's important that we remember that many people can and will cope with everything that's happening. Uh, frontline staff are generally a pretty resilient bunch. People are used to working in high pressure, high stress environments, and they've usually found ways of coping with the, the stresses and strains that go with that. Uh, that said, it wouldn't be surprising if some people are struggling right now, and um, whether it's now or further down the line, we wouldn't be surprised to see people experiencing problems like depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. Those would all be very understandable reactions given the context and everything that's happening. So it's important that we remember that experiencing those difficulties or struggling with everything that's happening isn't about individual weakness or a lack of resilience on, 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 on their part. Um, the best thing that, that you can do for yourself right now is to just take care of yourself and look after the people around you. Make sure you're getting the basics right and do the simple things. Um, if you are worried, if you do have any concerns, either about yourself or about somebody that you work with, I'd really encourage you to speak to your manager, speak to somebody within your team about what resources might be available and useful information might be out there. And also potentially what, what specialist services might be available to you to access more one-to-one uh, -one support from a, either a counselling or psychological therapy point of view. Sleep is really commonly affected during times of high stress and not getting enough sleep can have a, a massive impact on lots of different areas that affect our well-being, from our physical health to our, our mental well-being as well. So it's really important that we get the basics right. You know, there are lots of tips out there uh, to help with sleep hygiene. There are also several apps and web resources for, for relaxation, and some of these are free for NHS staff. So it might be helpful to have a look to see what's out there. In, in the current circumstances, it's important to think about the, the context of everything that's happening for people. So that might be to do with things going on in the personal life as much as things in the work life. Uh, perhaps people have family members who are ill or more vulnerable. Perhaps people are worried about their own health. Perhaps people are self-isolating um, and therefore can't do the usual things that they do to manage the, the stress and the, the strains of, of the, daily, the daily job. So I think it's really important that we remember that this isn't about a lack of resilience or weakness if somebody is seen to be struggling and um, it's, it's making sure that we recognize the context that things are just really tough at the moment and making sure that those messages are communicated and reinforced uh, within within a team um, we can help that by you know if, if we are worried about somebody if somebody seems more upset or anxious more angry or, or more numb and, and withdrawn than we will be usually you know that one of the best things we can do is to just take a moment to just ask them privately you know how, how are you doing how are things um, within that, we can take a really normalising approach, you know, highlighting what what is to be expected given given current circumstances, and to just take the time to listen, to understand what's happening for them, and to just hear what they're saying without rushing in to try and fix things. And for a lot of people, that might be enough. That might just be what they need. You know, not everybody's going to want or need specialist counselling or, or psychological therapy at the moment. Um, a kind of more of a watchful waiting approach is probably the the best thing at the minute, but. We can certainly do a lot in terms of just making sure that people have somebody to talk to if they want to, whether that's a friend or a family member, whether that's somebody within the team or whether that's a manager or a team leader. There's a lot that we can do for our colleagues in just encouraging them and facilitating their ability to, to chat to somebody if that feels useful. 
Um, the other thing it suggests is it sometimes it can be helpful to, to point people towards things to go and read and have a look at. There's lots of good resources out there that really talk about some of the common and typical responses that people experience after a significant trauma or during high periods of stress. So those might be useful things so that people can uh, kind of have a read and think about what's to be expected during these, these difficult times and to think about what they can do to, to, to look after themselves. It's likely that staff will feel a range of both positive and negative emotions, high and low points, good and bad days. If you're finding this difficult, remember you're likely not to be alone in this. Talk to your colleagues about how you're doing and check in with them about how they are as well. Whether that's a manager or a colleague, find someone that you feel comfortable talking to. Mm -hmm.